Um, you, can't put a, you can't put a scale on it and go, God loves me this much. Uh, who, who's got children in the room? How many, how many people? You know, the old, the, old, uh, the old competition that you have with your children. You know how much I love you? I love you to the moon and back. And then just Elijah will say, no, no, I love you to the sun and back. And then it eventually gets to infinity. And whoever gets to infinity first kind of wins, right? And then it's infinity, 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 infinity. <laughs> well, you can't measure how much God loves you. Which is amazing. Because us humans, we think that we have to perform to get God's love, right? We get into this position where we think that our behavior changes how God looks at us. We think that our behavior changes how God sees us. But the fact is, it doesn't. Because God's love isn't based on your behavior. God's love is based on the behavior of Christ on the cross. That was the sacrifice that was needed for God to be happy with you. And it was done, and it was finished, and He rose again. Amen? Because He loves you. Because He loves you. He loves you so much. He loves you to bits. He loves you so much. He thought you were worth dying for. Greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his friends. It's immeasurable. It's immeasurable. Let me read this scripture to you. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. To him who is able to do immeasurably more. Everybody say, immeasurably more. Immeasurably more. Than all we ask or imagine. Here's the thing about the immeasurability of God's love. You know when you can't measure something, you can't control it? I'm just going to let that sit with you for a moment. When you can't measure something, you can't control it. When we walk into this immeasurable love, with all our control issues, who's got control issues? I've got control. So thank you for your honest I ones one. <laughs> who raised your hands just now. I don't know if you actually or you just saw me raise your hand, so you raise your hand. I do that in church, like the preacher does this and I do this. You know, the rest of you are probably maybe just lying. I don't know. I know I would be lying to say I'm not a control freak. When it comes to love, there's certain things and certain ways that I would prefer that God would love me. Often I, I've made the mistake of thinking that God's love for me means He gives me all that I want. But my goodness, I'm glad He hasn't given me all I want at times because sometimes I've wanted the wrong stuff. Based on the wrong stuff that's in my heart. I've wanted the wrong things and, and God has rescued me because of His love. But I haven't liked it. I haven't liked it. I would prefer my natural self. My non-pastor self, my, 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 my human self, I would prefer if God would just love me the way I would. So I could say to Jesus, Jesus, you're my best friend, you love me so much, would you give me an ice cream today? <laughs> and an ice cream would just appear in my hand. Wouldn't we love that? But that's not how it is with God. And we see this at work throughout the Bible. One of the stories that I want to talk about today is a, is a story you've probably heard before if you've been around in church for a while. And that is the story of where Jesus walks on the water. In the book of Matthew. Here is a moment where we see Jesus loving somebody immeasurably. Where this person gets themselves themselves into a place where they are out of control. And Jesus in his love pulls them out of a mess. But it's a mess that they walk straight into thinking that they had it together when really Jesus was showing them. That they did it. Let, let, me, let me explain it to you. It's, it's where Jesus walks on the water. Now to give you a background on this story. Jesus had been praying all night. He had just fed 5,000 people. And his, and his cousin had just been murdered. He's had his head. He had been beheaded. And it was his cousin. It was probably Jesus' like would have been the guy that Jesus would have grown up with. He's been murdered. Jesus has got news of that. He's probably grieving. That's why he wanted to go off and pray by himself. He tells his disciples, I'm going to go and pray. 
Now you guys, I want you to go across the lake to the other side. I'll meet you there in the morning. Jesus doesn't tell them how he's going to get across the other side. The lake is probably around about four miles wide. Okay, it's probably, it probably should take about an hour and a half to get from one side to the other. You understand? Yeah. Should take about an hour and a half to get... All night goes, so let's pick it up. From 22 it says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already been already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. They'd gotten themselves into a storm. They get they'd gotten themselves into a place where they were out of control. They were in danger. Shortly before dawn, now just just hold up a sec. This lake was going to take how long to cross? Who's got a memory here? An hour and a half, right? Half an hour. Now it tells us that it was about later. It was later that night, so it was still night time. He sends them off. By morning time, nearly before the morning, before the sun's coming up, here they are, still out on that lake. It had taken them all night. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. I just... Simple. <laughs> 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 I add that into my uh, repertoire of jokes, just random snorting. <laughs> Surprise myself. <laughs> when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. I would say that one of the disciples probably let out, you know, when you mean to do a man scream, but it comes out as a girl scream? It's probably like that. <laughs> Okay, but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And here's Peter. Here's Peter. Who knows that Peter's like he's a strong guy, right? He's the guy that's got it all together. He's the guy that wants Jesus' approval. He's the guy that's going to prove that he is worthy. He's the, here's the guy who's like, yeah, yeah, I've got it together, God. I, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm better than the rest of these guys. But Jesus is showing him something. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come on to the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat and the wind died down, in other words, Jesus had made it windy. Then the ro- Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, 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 you're, you're not just a man. Truly, there is something about you in this whole situation, this moment we just had, that proves you are You really are the Son of God. Now let me just break this down for a moment. Here's Peter. Here's Peter. He sees Jesus on the water. Now Peter had some confidence. Peter had some internal fortitude. Peter had Something going on on the inside of him where he thought, you know what? I can do that. That's my Jesus. I can do that. See, Peter had a measure of faith. And, and you know what got Peter out, out onto the water? It was not so much Jesus. Now, don't, don't take me too far theologically on this. Of course, it was Jesus who made him walk on the water. But it wasn't really Jesus that got Peter out on the water. If you take, if you look at this, it was Peter's faith. It was what Peter had. Who knows this about faith? The moment we think that faith is strength, we've made a mistake. Faith isn't strength. Jesus said, unless you become like a little child, you're not acceptable. Wow. 
Unless you cut, what, what, what is it about a child? Well, a child, I know from my children, they are dependent on me and my wife. If we don't look after them, they're done for. Especially in Mumbai. Hmm. There is no child protection services over there that work. There's nothing. It's like, we have to look after our kids, right? That's not the reason why I look after my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. The moment we think that faith is strength, and, and this is the point with Peter. He's like, oh, well, I'm good enough to do this. I can walk out onto there. I know what to do. Show off to my mates on the boat. I'm just kidding. Jesus, call me out onto the water. I got this. He steps out onto the water. <laughs> and here starts the lesson for Peter. The lesson wasn't a lesson on how to walk on water. Who knows? <laughs> Ever since I've read this scripture, every body of water, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, maybe I could just, maybe today's my day. <laughs> every puddle I see, I'm like, maybe I'll just have a practice. <laughs> Anybody ever tried to walk? Oh, come on, you know you've done it, right? You've, you know, it's like, okay, there's a pool, there's no one around, I'm just going to see it, but maybe I can... And in you go. Anybody actually walked on that? Just, you know. <laughs> but this wasn't a lesson on how to walk on water for Peter. This was a lesson of what faith really is. Yeah. And what it, what it means to walk into the immeasurable, the immeasurable love of Christ. Like I said, who knows that you're going to get into situations because of Christ's love for you that you cannot control. And Peter walks in to a moment where he is completely out of control, completely out of control. How do we know that Peter realizes that he's out of control? Well, it's this interesting little scripture here in verse 30, Sarah, where it says, it says, but when he saw the wind, now, just, just think about this for a moment. Can you see wind? What's that talking about? If you can see wind, you probably shouldn't be seeing wind. You probably need a checkup. You can't see wind. But what's it saying? When I was younger, I grew up in Perth, and in Perth, there's uh, you know there's not much to do except just go out to the beach and swim, right? And one of the things that we would do is a lot of, um, of a lot of fishing and a lot of skin diving. And some of, you know, my dad used to have a boat and we'd go and skin dive off the boat. It was a lot of fun. Who knows that when it's windy and you're out on the boat, you jump off the boat, that the boat goes one way and you stay in the water. You, you know what I mean? And like the boat moves away really quickly. Who knows what I'm talking about? That's what happened, except the wind's against the boat. So it's going the opposite direction. It's going back to where they've come from. Peter's probably seen that. He's probably got these, there's probably gigantic waves. See, Peter sees the wind. He's in the water and he sees the wind. And he realizes, I'm out of control. I'm out of control. This, I'm not, I'm not going to make it here. I'm done for here. And this is the immeasurable moment. This is the immeasurable moment of Christ's love for Peter. Where he is in deeper than he's ever imagined. He's in deeper than he's ever thought. If I could just talk about myself for a moment. In Mumbai, I stepped out in some confidence that I had. I'm telling you something. In the past five years, probably in the last year, I'll be honest with you, I, I have gone and seen the wind. And I've gone, God, I just don't know. And when my faith, that little bit that I had, has run out, it's run out. I'm like, God, I'm done. 